Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the Lockhart Perspective. This is one of our uh, episodes of the Lockhart Radio podcast. And tonight we are continuing our uh, Feast of Trumpets that was taught by Ronnie Mann the year of 2021. And it's only fitting because tomorrow, uh, October the 5th, is the Feast of Trumpets, and that's when it all starts. So uh, please go on ahead and get yourself relaxed. Remember, this is a recording of, and um, so we are looking at what we did a couple of years ago, okay? And so I just want to thank each and every one of you all for tuning in. I think it's awesome that you're here. And before we get started, I want to uh, give everybody an invitation to take part in something that I love very much. <laughs> and I keep doing it this way, but I want everybody to uh, not forget to take part in my friend's barbecue sauce. So we'll be right back after this. Hey everyone, it's me, Felicia of the Lockhart Perspective and Headlines with a Voice. I want to tell you a little secret. This is what I used to do because I don't do it anymore. I would go to the store, buy the barbecue sauce, pour it inside of a bowl, put a whole bunch of different spices, a dash of brown sugar, a dash of maple, and a dash of mustard, stir it all around, and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, this is the best, this is the best. But I was exhausted after all of that, and a lot of times I couldn't remember how many dashes of what I put in it. But I don't have to do that anymore because now I just go to Judge Joe Brown's website and I order his three pack of bottled barbecue sauce. It is by far the best. And I do mean the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten. And when you go to his website and you order his three pack, you'll see exactly what I mean. Head on over to JJBBBQ.com and order Judge Joe Brown's barbecue sauce. You'll be glad you did. And you're going to tell me about it. I know you will. Well, I know a lot of people have ordered my friend's barbecue sauce. It is absolutely delicious. I happen to love it. And I hope that once you go to his website, you will as well. As well, you can go to Amazon and just type in Judge Joe Brown's barbecue sauce and you'll get a host of items that he has uh, curated with a chef, a very good chef. Nonetheless, I want everybody to go on ahead and get ready as we sink our teeth into Ronnie Mann teaches the Feast of Trumpets uh, from 2021. I hope you all enjoy. I'll be with you here and there. Okay, here you are. So it is a, a day of atonement. Okay. It's the day of atonement. Like we're, we're doing heavy atoning over here. Um, and, um, and, and the concept is, uh, as far as the Feast of Trumpets, we have to sound the blast for our people, for the ones who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Mm -hmm. We, we are sounding the trumpet and blasting the trumpet and we are getting everybody prepared to, <clears throat> you know, uh, to really, really, really. Humble yourself for this okay. day of atonement that is approaching. Uh -huh. And then, you know, after we make it through, it's a purification. It's a it's a uh, cleansing. It's, you know, um, it's the equivalent of being cleansed, in, washed in the blood. You know what I mean? Uh, so this whole entire concept here prepares us as the bride to in verse 33 now we can enjoy the feast of tabernacles and the feast of tabernacles is the feast of indwelling uh or in gathering and it is um the marriage feast mm. but we have to clean ourselves because we've been corrupted through uh you know through the course of living yeah. uh, um you know uh, from the romanized uh power structure from 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 the romanized mindset and we have to cleanse ourselves and prepare ourselves because we are renewed by the, uh, we are we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's oh, how we're yes, transformed. Yes. And 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 we can't deceive ourselves in thinking that somebody else can do it for us. Mm -mm. What he's done is wipe the what what Yahweh Shah has done in his uh, sacrifice uh, for us has wiped our slate clean, mm -hmm. and now it is up to us to secure our own salvation. Hallelujah. With fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the objective uh, is to uh, get is to sound the alarm with the Feast of Trumpets, get through a, atonement. 
and be purified in the process so we can enjoy and lavish in the wedding feast. The wedding feast. Yes. And I've said this on a number of occasions. The book of Revelation tells the bride to prepare herself. Mm -hmm. This entire month, of uh, uh, the seventh month, is mm -hmm. us preparing ourselves. Very good. So, so, so we're, right now we're sounding the alarm for everybody that, that, that wants to be, uh, you know, um, in the banquet, at the banquet, and not get kicked out mid-banquet, tied up hand and foot and thrown out <laughs> where there's weeping, you know, in the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, then this is the process, and this is how we put on our righteous garments. Hallelujah. So uh, the Feast of, so, so um, it will go through the Day of Atonements mm -hmm. and we'll go through the Feast of Tabernacles, um, you know, back to back almost. But right now let's hone in, let's keep on going through with the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. So it lets you know that it is a perpetual memorial through, throughout all of our generations um, to, you know, proclaim. So what we're doing is we, okay, so we just looked where Paul was talking about how the Son of Man is coming back. Mm -hmm. The Messiah is on his way back mm -hmm. at the sound of the trumpet. So in actuality, what we're doing here is we are proclaiming the coming of the king. Mm. Make ready. Wow. Make ready the coming of the king. It says, oh, yeah, but, but um, you know, modern um, westernized Christianity is going to tell us we don't know when, when he's coming. Mm -hmm. um, he's coming at a feast of trumpets. Mm -hmm. He's coming at a feast of trumpets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to, we are the ones who are supposed to make ready wow. the coming of the king. Wow. It's our job. Wow. So this is, so this is what we're doing. We are, um, we are preparing oh. the way for the coming of the king and we are blowing and sounding the alarm. He's on his way. He's on hey, his way. Yes. Wake up. Wake up. Yes. You who sleep, it's time to wake up. Yes. Get out of your slumber. Yes. Let's go. You know, put on your garments. Mm. It's, you know, uh, um, we're about to go to the feast. You got to have on the right clothes. I don't want to be nowhere else but with him. And it's just so sweet to know that all those times in our lives when we were saying, oh, I just don't want to miss it. I just want to make sure that I'm in his will. Oh, I just want. And here is your desire being met, that you have the truth and you can follow it to ensure that you do not, that your heart is purged of all unrighteousness and that you are in the place that you're supposed to be when the time comes. And it is exactly like the 10 virgins that he used as the um, analogy to show us exactly how we need to be ready. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Steve Willis, we're sorry that you have to go and I'm glad to see that you were there. We love you so much and we're glad that you're here. I hope that you catch us on the replay for the rest. All the scriptures are left down below in the description box. Have a super night. Hug your wife. Okay. This is a good time. This is a good time. Okay, so this is happening on the first day of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. And and we've already established that that is a new moon day. That is a new moon day. And, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll figure out together what day that is exactly as far as the Gregorian calendar is concerned. It's like, what, five or six it's days been, from now? Yeah, because it's been changed so much. And even with the fact that, um, you know, Yas calendar really is only 364 days. Um, it, it, it has thrown stuff off so much, but that's the reason why he tells us to follow for sign because he knew that they were going to change. It even told us that they were going to look to change the days and times to continue to look up and to continue to see, you know, what time it is basically by the moon. That's right. That's right. So, uh, let's go over to numbers 10 real quick. All right, we're going. So Masha was commanded to make two silver trumpets and, um, uh, in the in the tabernacle, and uh, it, he blows them to call the assembly together, mm -hmm. or he has his priests to blow them mm -hmm. to uh, call the assemblies together. Uh, now, mind you, in the tabernacle, when we're speaking on the tabernacle, that means that we were out there in the wilderness at this juncture. We're out here in the wilderness, and uh, we have to to 
set up camp, break down camp. We have to, you know, travel. We have to move out in uh, in in regiments, basically. In, yeah. In, in, um, so, excuse me. Give me a moment. It's okay. So we do have right now on the screen, everybody, numbers 10, so that you will be able to follow along with us. I'm going to try to make that just a little bit bigger. Um, I don't. I hope it doesn't lose anything, but these borders on the side here are huge. So I'm going to so, make it a little larger. Go ahead, Ronnie. So this is a call to, to assemble the masses. Okay. And when, when I mean masses, I'm talking about Yah's people. Um, so he, he, he was commanded to make two trumpets of silver uh, and, um, you know, to call the assembly for the journeying of the camps. In verse three, it says that you shall blow them. All the assemblies um, um, shall assemble themselves uh, to the at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if you blow it one time, if you blow the um, if you blow but one trumpet, I'm sorry, if you blow but one trumpet, then the princes and the heads of the thousands of Yasharal shall gather themselves. Um, but when you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. So that so when you're blowing an alarm, that's that that's uh, the companies moving out, heading up and moving out. Um, and they shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, then then you uh, when you blow, you shall not sound an alarm. So when you blow, you're not going to sound an alarm. That means everybody's going to come together. And the sons of Aharon. It says the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Who? The priests. The priests blow the trumpets. And they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generation. So this is the uh, assembling and the uh, the the heading out, the, the, the breaking down, the, the companies moving out. When I say companies like, you know, tribes, um, according to however they were designated or what okay. have you. And they're uh, and they're departing from the campsite and heading on to the next site, basically. Or what, once they have established camp, then they're uh, they're calling the congregation to order, or they're calling certain people to come and congregate, um, depending on the different types of trumpets. Okay. Um, what I'm doing here is we're not going into depth about that. I just want to let you know that these trumpet blasts represent a calling of his people. Is what I'm trying to hone, is what I'm trying to get us to grasp. So um, we're being called at this time. We're being called every single year at this time, actually. But we ha haven't had ears to hear. We, 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 you know, we've been oppressed and suppressed. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, our eyes are open, and and we're starting to wake up from our slumber, from our drunken state, mm -hmm. and we are gaining more, you know, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of how the Most High wants us to maneuver, and. Um, and he actually sets us up to maneuver by the blasts of trumpets. <laughs> That's how he calls us to maneuver. Wow. <laughs> is through the blasting wow. of trumpets. So it says, you shall uh, be remembered before um, Yah, your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Did you hear that? It says, if you go to war in the land against your enemy that mm -hmm. oppresses you, Mm -hmm. And you blow the alarm with the trumpets, mm -hmm. then you shall be remembered before Yah your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So blowing of the trumpet, this isn't just something that you do just do play play. You know, this isn't something that you that you take lightly. This is a war cry. This is a battle cry. This is a call to battle. This is a call to to you know um, add attention, add attention to let even our enemies know that we are standing and we are ready. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says in the day of your gladness in verse 10, it says in the day of your gladness in in your solemn days, that's a solemn assembly. And in the beginning of your months, that's a new moon. You shall Correct. blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings. So I just want to show you, you know, like we are commanded to do this, but we we're not familiar with it. So we uh, kind of gloss over these concepts, but they're there. And they're there for strong, super strong reasons. Right, right. Um, so we are to blow. So uh, we're to blow these things, uh, the, 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 these these trumpets, and sound these blasts during the solemn assemblies and during the new moons. Um, okay. And uh, over the burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of peace offerings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be a memorial before our Elohim. 
Why? Because he's Yah or Elohim. That's why. So yeah, I just wanted to um to touch on that. And um, if we go to Joshua, like I said, we're just we're just highlighting certain points that let us know what's going on. So in Joshua, uh, um, where? Uh, if you go to Joshua six and sixteen. Uh, um, it, this is when Joshua brings everybody into Jericho or, or uh, to the walls of Jericho. And um, what do they do? They march around the wall seven times. And then on, uh, after the seventh time, they blow, the tr- they blow the trumpets. That's right. They blow these trumpets. That's right. Okay, we're there. And um, once you go in further into into your studies, you'll realize that there's different types of trumpets. You have the mm. ram's horn, the shofar. Then you have those uh, silver horns that are blasting. Then you have these other types of horns. That's this. That's the sounding of, of a certain type of alarm. So, uh, but that's not what I'm trying to focus on. Uh, but I do want to let you know that there are actually different types of trumpets as well. But, but right now we're sounding the shofar. This is major, major business. This is major business when you're sounding the shofar, but it says the, uh, the, the seventh time around in Joshua six sixteen when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, when who did the priests, the priests. Yeah. The priests. The trumpet blast. Yeah. Joshua, which interestingly enough, is the English word for Yahweh Shah. Correct. Who we call Jesus. It's my second grandson. Commanded <laughs> the army shout. For Yah has given you the city. So I just want to let you know that, you know, during, even during wartime specifically, like Yah's people mm-hmm. are, are sounding the trumpet, the blasting of, you know, they're blasting the trumpet. And what's crazy is that's what gets the job done alone. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And it reminds me of what we were just reading about in um, what we were taking a gander at Gideon the other day. Remember, we were I was reading about Gideon and they had the trumpet and they also had the pitcher and they would mm-hmm. blow the sound of the trumpet, which is actually the war cry. It's actually mm-hmm. a war sound. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is a war cry. It is the war cry. It's the war cry in the heavenlies. It's the war cry in the spiritual. So when these uh, um, unclean spirits, demons, devils, whatever you want to call them, when they hear this, they know that you that you are waking up from your slumber and you mean business. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. They also know that more people are starting to blow the shofar at a particular time. At a, not just randomly, not just, you know, lightly here, you know, just, just because, but specifically we're blowing it at the first, at the new moon of the seventh month, collectively, everybody on one accord with the same mindset, these spirits, these, these, uh, eat, you know, unclean spirits are shaking in their boots. They're like, oh my goodness, people are starting to understand. That means our time is drawing short. And, you know, I think that's the thing that I really want to drive home. Everybody that's watching with us here in the um, in the actual live as well as in the replay is that the time is drawing so near and it's drawing so short that we need this in our lives right now. It's awesome that it's for such a time as this that we would come into this knowledge and come into this understanding. And um, I just want to say that these are the things that are chief. These are the cornerstones. These are the the main pillars, as it were, of our belief system. Believe it or not, this is how we are to follow through with everything that he has given us. Um, It just, wow. Yes, we were made for such a time as this, Mama Bear, Papa Mm -hmm. Bear. Absolutely. 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 And you know what? I know a lot of times we get so tired and we get so, we get so, um, let me just say this, because I just want to minister this to everybody right now that would need it. Sometimes we get so exhausted and so tired in the things that are going around and the things that we have to deal with on a daily basis that once we begin to know this truth, it doesn't bother us as much as it once did. 
Because when we're tied up in the things that's going on in the world, then we behave as the world does, as if they have no hope. But when we tie ourselves to our Father and to His will and to His way, we know that He has made so many provisions for us and such a sweet protection that He's given us. If only we would walk and stand in the middle of His will. That is our protection. And yes, it is easy to get derailed and to get distracted by the things that go on around us because we feel as if we just can't separate ourselves from the things that are around. But we can when we decide to tune it out and turn it off. Some would say that you're living in um, a delusion or you're not living in reality when you try to be that way. But I submit that it's quite the opposite, that you are right smack dab in the middle of reality when you elect and choose only to set your mind on things above and to have that mind in you that wants to serve him and do his will. And then you line your body up with that. What my mind and my spirit want to do is to follow and serve him. And then you make it happen. You are far closer to being safe than you ever were. Then you ever were, we gave the analogy a few weeks ago that if you decided to prepare and prepare and prepare and you've got all this stuff in your house and then all of a sudden a flood comes through and everything you prepared for leaves you back at zero. If you had a big, uh, you know, y'all forbid, a big fire and everything that you purchased to have and in case of a rainy day is gone, it's gone and now you're back at zero. Well, if you put your trust in him, And if you allow him to lead you and guide you and you live according to his word and follow the feast and follow his commandments, you are in the safest place in the building. You're in the safest place in the world. So if you don't know and you're listening and you're hearing this on the replay, would you consider just finding out how he wants you to do it and go through some of the videos that we have here and you may find something that leads you into the path of righteousness that you can then pass down to your children and to their generation and so on and so forth. Ronnie, you go right ahead, but I just had to share that with everybody, not to give up, you guys. Don't worry about the stuff you see that's going on around us every day. Tune that stuff out and instead the 15 minutes that you would give watching that negative stuff, Put it in the word. Take your nose and just put it in the word. It's better to be buried and and to just be in him than it is to be in all of that big ball of confusion, repeating that stuff over and over again. He's such a gentleman. He'll take his hand off and allow you to wallow in that. And then when you're at the point of depression and you just can't take it anymore and you go to him, he'll take you right back to the book and he'll take you right back to the beginning and say, start here, learn your first love and you'll be okay. Go ahead, Ronnie. Yeah, it's no coincidence that the the feasts, all of the feasts are Sabbaths. And if you are following the uh, the celestial, the biblical calendar, the sun and the moon and the stars that, uh, you know, in, in Genesis 1 has told us that that is what gives us the signs, the seasons, the days and the years, then you will understand that all of these feasts, not only are they Sabbaths, but they fall on Sabbaths, which is why they are Sabbaths. (laughs) So they're falling Mm -hmm. on Sabbaths. (laughs) So uh, when we put it all together, there is a specific reason why he continues to tell us not to work on these Sabbaths. There's a And we're going to pause there just for a moment. Um, Due to some of the guidelines, we've got to make sure that we break it up just a little bit so that we have some type of change or difference in the video. And so what I want to do right now is insert one of my friend's beautiful songs here, and it's called Sarah's Nocturne, Sarah's Nocturne. So I hope that you enjoy this Sarah's Nocturne by none other than L.A. Marzulli.
And that was Sarah's Nocturne by L.A. Marzulli, a wonderful pianist, an excellent historian, and I'm very happy to call him my friend. Now let's get back because he is going, he exacts all of everything that he establishes um, in the what, earthly realm. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, they are built around these feasts. Yes, absolutely. They are. So, so he's going to like, these are his appointed times. These are mm -hmm. the times that, you know, for every season, you know, for, for, for everything, there is a season. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a time for war. There's a time for peace. There's a time for, for him to exact his vengeance mm -hmm. and to, to exact his ind indignation upon the yes. nations. Yes. And they are during these feast days is when he's going to do these things. Um, so, when we when we grasp that understanding, he's going to pretty much decimate these nations. But if you are where you're supposed to be on a Sabbath, which is not at work, then you're not going to be affected. And you know what? And you know what, Ronnie, I'm going to say this. I remember at the top of uh, at the end of last year and the top of this past of this year we're currently in. I remember being so exacerbated and just I, I just took a deep breath and I was like, you know what? I don't want to work on the Sabbath anymore. I just don't. And then the father said, okay, then quit this job. <laughs> and I was like, uh, how am I going to make it? Quit this job. When I quit the job and I found that I had the time to pour more into this, and uh, I took the baby steps instead of just immersing, just jumping right where I felt, where I knew I was supposed to be. Um, he made it a way to where I don't even miss that job. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I don't have that money, but who cares about that money? I'm able to now rest on the Sabbath. I'm literally able to rest on the Sabbath. And it felt, at first it felt so weird, you know, just resting on the Sabbath felt so odd because we're so used to hustle and bustle and move and go and move and go. But I tell you, once you get into it, he makes provision for you. He absolutely does. Um, and he, it's, it's actually always been built in, but we have decided to rely on the world for our resources and maybe not have decided, but we, we, we were born into this structure and we, that's what we know. Uh, but right, if, right. But if we, you know, uh, are to um, really, really seek his face, he really wants us to chill out and rely on him. Yeah. And, and it's so true. It is. Yeah. So so as far as these uh, Sabbaths go, like if we are in place where we're supposed to be, then we are not going to partake in the plague. Exactly. In the, it, we're, we're not going. To, we are not going to partake in the plagues that he, um, you know, exacts on the world and on the nation. Um, and if we if we accidentally get caught up in those, it's because we put ourselves in that environment. We it's like we went backwards, right? It's like we went back into something that we shouldn't be involved in. And we can slip real easily because it's it's comfort. Absolutely, but 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 when we do when we start to do these feasts and we implement them as I don't know, um habitual something that we continually do and strive to want to do each and every year then it will become a habit and it will become what even second nature even first nature eventually um and on on that day when he does come with the sound of the trumpets we have we it, we it, we've been already doing what we were supposed to be doing that you know it'll be familiar territory it would be familiar territory. So let me ask you just, and I, cause I don't want to take all of your time and just drag all this good juiciness, all this awesome word. So let me ask you, so say for example, here we are, we are coming up on the, um, you know, the, um, the feast of trumpets. What are we to do that day? For example, on that day, what do we do? Just, just from the beginning to the end, what is it that we physically do? 
we're 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 about to go into it right now. Oh, okay, good. I'm at the yeah. right place at the right time. Numbers twenty nine, right? No, Joshua. Okay, I'm sorry. Go to numbers twenty nine. Okay, cool beans. Hold on, right there. You hear all that clicking? This is a new mouse. It's got to go. All right. There you go. And Numbers 29. Hard at work. Huh? And let's just know that you're hard at work. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm taskmaster. Um, got it. Numbers 29, it says in the seventh month on the first day of the month. That's what we've been talking about the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the seventh month, on the first mm -hmm. day of the month, mm -hmm. you shall have a set apart convocation, a gathering, an mm -hmm. assembly. Uh, and you shall do no servile work. He's telling you, don't go to work. Don't mm. do any work. It's a Shabbat. Don't go. Mm. Don't don't go to work. It is a day of blow of blowing the trumpets unto you. That's what you're supposed to be doing on this day. Mm -hmm. You blow the trumpets. Just hang out and blow the trumpets. <laughs> um, and and Jericho is gonna fall. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Imagine if we just did that and just did and you know what I mean. Just wow, what a change. What oh wow. Okay, go and ahead. It says, and it says, you shall offer a burnt offering with a sweet savor unto Yah, one young bullock, so, you know, some steak, some beef, uh, you know, one ram and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil, three uh, tenths deals for a bullock, and a tenth a deal for a ram, and a tenth a deal for uh, one lamb throughout the seven lambs. Um, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. So this, these are the offerings that are, that are preparing you for the, the quote unquote day of atonements, atonements, uh, beside the offer, the burnt offering of the month and his meat offering and the daily burnt offering and his meat offering and their drink offerings, according to their manner for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire, unto yeah so this is the thing we are not a sovereign nation at this juncture okay we we're living in you know proverbial egypt right now we're still in egypt uh if you want to call it babylon we're in babylon okay we're in, where if you want to call it rome we're in rome mm -hmm. we, this is this is where we are at this time so um quote unquote you know if we're using biblical uh um typographies and biblical uh, verbiage, we are still in the land of our captivity. Okay. So I don't have a huge farm where I can, you know, slay seven lambs. Like, I, like I'm not, I'm not. In, I was about to ask, what do we do in that case? I don't, I don't have, I don't have my inherit. you know, I don't have an inheritance to be able to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're still oppressed until we are saved on the, on that great day. Uh, and it actually says great and terrible day to be <laughs> to, to be forward. But um, we can definitely in, in, in the interim, we can definitely do these things in spirit and in truth. OK. We can absolutely do these things in spirit and in truth. OK. Because in actuality, when when we are able to do these things again, mm -hmm. um, the priest is going to do it for us. So, okay, let me ask you something. The priest is going to do it for us in actuality at that time. What do we do on that day? Do I just go and get like I did before and get my lamb or am I going to get beef or what, 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 tell me what you do. What, what, what do you guys do in your household as far as preparation and, and, and what do you do? Well, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to throw something on the grill, whether it be a lamb, whether it be steak, whether it be, you know, some, something like that. But something is going on that grill as a burnt offering, okay. a burnt meat offering okay. unto Yah. And this is the thing. We, uh, there's other places in scripture that says that we are the ones that eat the offering. We're the ones that eat the offering. Like we burn the fat off. We burn off all the, you know, entrails and things okay. like that. Okay. And then we eat the meat. OK. Um, so, you know, this is basically dinner. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference, because when we're doing these other holidays, when we're doing these holidays. Yeah. Inadvertently, what we're doing is we are making a burnt sacrifice unto 
the culture's God, unto the other nation's gods. Wow. Explain that a little more in depth. Okay. For example, what do you do on July 4th? You well, cook out. Yeah, cook out. You mm -hmm. throw something on the grill. Yeah. But that is the nation's holiday. And that's not our nation. Wow. Our nation is Yasharal. So We're it's doing... the same, it's the same premise putting stuff on the grill. Exactly. Wow. And, and, and because it's what you were saying earlier, it's the facsimile. They understand what they're doing. That's why they encourage you to have the cookouts and things like that. Exactly. And then in certain places, they stop you from doing it the right way, even cooking out the correct way. You're going to use electricity in some areas or butane or something else. And so you can't do it by fire. not so, by fire. And so it's so, not purified. So they were having the same issue in the biblical days when, when, when they said all of these new converts that are coming into uh, understanding of truth, that you are not to eat meat that is sacrificed to the God, to other gods. This is the same thing. You're not supposed to be having the cookout on, you know, Labor Day. Oh, you're supposed wow. to be having the cookout on the Feast of Trumpets. Wow. You're supposed to be having the cookout at the Feast of Tabernacles. Wow. So it's no wonder why you've got that Labor Day in the seventh month. Labor right, Day the is first right Monday there at the Feast of Trumpets. It which, is right at the Feast of Trumpets. Which yeah. God are you going to serve? Labor Day, wow. I want to say, is September 6th. Correct. It's next Monday, right? Feast of Trumpets is September 7th. Wow. Which, which Elohim? is more weighty in your mind Whoa. and in your what are you going to do that's amazing all the holidays simply some for the most part simply line up with that that is amazing wow well, and my wedding anniversary is the 7th 7 7 7 7 9 9 7 wow feast of trumpets feast of trumpets preparing us for the for the wedding banquet interesting wow yeah it is interesting my nickname is 7 we got married on the 7 September 7. That is weird. Hmm. Um, but we but we definitely have to understand that is why they implemented and put that in place. Like, look, one of the things that you cannot do, uh, it, well, one of them is you know, eat the blood uh, of of you know the animals um that you're cooking to eat. You know, and somebody then, asked too, us about that earlier. We didn't get a chance to answer that where they were talking about you know the blood and and all of that. Yah's daughter says, celebrating being a slave, labor. And then uh, Mama Bear, Papa Bear said, um, conniving, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. Um, go ahead, because I have a question, but go ahead. Well, and two, we're not supposed to be uh, eating any uh, meat that has been sacrificed to other gods. And this is exactly what we're doing. You know, so, uh, President's Day cookout. Wow. So, but then a lot of time people say, well, you know what? I just go to the halal store and I'll get halal meat because I know that it doesn't have all the other stuff. Or I go over here to the, yeah, to see, the you're Jewish. Missing the point. You're missing to the, the Jewish point. store. It's spirit and in truth. Like you're, you're, you're missing the point. Now, now you can, now you can do that. That, but, that's, but it's sacrificed to different gods though. But, but what I'm saying though, is that um, if you decide to do that because of, you know, whatever uh, understanding that you have uh, grasped, yeah. what you're doing is you are only circumcising the flesh and you don't have a circumcised heart coming into ah, it. And you very need good. Oh, Very good. That's the point that I'm trying to make. We have very to good. have a circumcised everything. Like everything has to be uh, trimmed. And even our lamps are supposed to be trimmed and burning. We are a fire that is supposed to be trimmed and like very specific and very on purpose and very mindful to remain set apart. And uh, wow. And, you know, Memorial Day, we're having a cookout, but these feasts are supposed to be memorials unto our Elohim. Wow. Do you see how they've done that, you guys? You see, every point that he's making, we can look into this place that we're in right now, and they all point to something. So there's nothing they do by accident. It's all planned. Everything they do is planned, and it's all planned to take you off of. So if you're doing Labor Day, you're not going to think about the, the Feast of Trumpets. 
You're not going to think about the piece of shrimp. It's Labor Day. They make it easy, though. They give you the day off on that. but They, they give you the off. day off. Yeah. You know, but you have to, you know, uh, to literally, nail it. <laughs> yeah. And you have to literally fill out a document that says you have a religious, you know, you'd have a religious restriction do uh, document that actually says, Hey, I don't work on this day. It's going to be this time and this this period, and it will fluctuate month to month, um, unless you have somebody who's a you know a person like me that when I was a HR, I was always you know I was actually very understanding to people who said, "Hey, look, I'm a I'm a commandment keeper," and I got it. You know what I mean? It may not be the way that I do things, but I get it. You, you're a commandment keeper. Here's the document fill it out and, and we'll, you know, we'll make sure that Friday, you know, sundown, you're not here. And then, you know, sundown, you know, Saturday, you're not here, but that was their, that was their system. But listen, they have made it a way where you can do every one of their feast days and you don't even have to ask for the day off. And the entirety <laughs> of, of commerce, the yes. entirety of the economic structure shuts down on, for you. That lets you know that that is man, like it, the dichotomy, the, the spiritual dichotomy that is involved. Absolutely. And that's how I know that the next announcement, the next major, because there are going to be a few other announcements, but the next major announcement is family is so important. You need to be off on this day. And we're all just going to shut it all down and just relax. Family is so important. You need to be off on this day. And this is the, well, let's see what day we're going to choose. Hmm. Okay. We'll just choose this day. And then everybody's going to be off on one specific day. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, when have they ever wanted to give you something? It's going to be to worship their beast, most assuredly. Whether the computer system has to download and upload some new info or they're going to be working on it or something like that. And whatever it is, they're going to pick a day and that day is going to be rolled out to everybody. I think there's one state that does it now, isn't it? One state is closed pretty much on a Sunday, I think it is, Saturday or Sunday. And I believe that it is the state of, um, it's got two states with the same name, North and, oh gee, I can't think of it, but I'm sure somebody in the, in the, um, in the chat knows what I'm talking about. There's a couple of different states and this one particular state just shuts down on Sunday. And to me, it's just a way to test it out just to see how it will work. Um, if it works for them, then it'll work for everybody. And that's exactly what's going to happen next. Yeah, it's and and oh okay. Um wow, I didn't know they did either. Um woman of of spirit, Carolina, she says Carolina does. But the point that I'm making is it is it's like an act of congress, Ronnie man, to get an employer to let you off for a specific thing that you do in your own family for holiday. Um for example, asking someone, "Listen, I cannot come in on this week, this month coming, it's going to be all Mondays. I won't be able to come in. Okay. Not in the morning. I, I can't come in until the evening. Well, we close in the evening. Well, I won't be able to work Monday. Can I just have my day off Monday? It's like an act of Congress. Yes, it is Dakota. I think it's North or South Dakota. Absolutely. Mama bear, Papa bear. That's where it is. Where the folks know it or not that for sure. There is no working on a Sunday. I believe it is mama bear, Papa bear, no working. That is to me, that's been like sitting there so quietly and so calm no one's really put it on the radar. We know it, but it's sort of like under the radar. It's to me, it's like a test pilot. It's like a test dummy to see how it's going to work. Yeah. So, but to me, it's like, yeah, it's hard to get that. But in a minute, that's going to be the next thing that they're going to give you. Just to Ronnie Mann's point, Labor Day, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it that it's actually on the Feast of Trumpets? You've got all of these times that it's always a feast day. Look at um, the Feast of, uh, what was that? The one that we did that I remember the most because the, the fence for the next guy fell down. Was it Tabernacles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Passover. It was Passover. It was Passover. And, and that's a time too. Think it not strange that all of their holidays fall on a day of distraction for us. Wow. We're distracted thinking about what it is they want us to do. Hey, they're giving you a day on Memorial Day, uh, Ronnie. What are you guys going to do on Labor Day? What are you going to do on Memorial Day? Right. You guys cooking out? Are and you I'm guys not, cooking out? And I'm not saying that the cookout, like you can't cook out. You know, that's, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. No, but, but it's an exchange. But when you're cooking out, uh, as a national culture, you know, like you're doing it nationalistically and culturally um, and and uh, looking like the world and and, you know, adhering to what the world has prescribed and, 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 and you have subscribed to it. And now you're fully on board. That's when you are 
sacrificing, you know, burnt offerings unto other gods. That's that's what that is. That is exactly what that is. And it's and then on top of that, you've traded it. Like you said, it's a trade off. You're not doing that unto your unto your Elohim, but you're doing it unto you, the nation that you're living in's uh, Elohim. Um, it's yeah. actually unacceptable to Yah because he tells you that his people, he makes it a command that we are to do specifically his feasts. Mm, These absolutely. are the celebrations. These are the quote unquote holidays. These are the set apart days that we're supposed to observe. Not the Christmases, not the Easter's, not the New Year's's because New Year's January 1st is arbitrary. It, it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah, I remember um, we did the study on Janus, the looking forward and looking back two sides of the coin. coin we did it this year, remember? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, we talked about that. So the Feast of Trumpets is we're getting ready for the Day of Atonement, and that's the first day of the seventh month. The Day of Atonement is the 10th day of the seventh month. So my we have 10 days. birthday, which I don't really celebrate, but my birthday is the 10th day of this coming of this month. Right, but it's not the tenth day of uh, uh, the seventh. the The tenth day of the of the biblical tenth day of the seventh month is not the tenth day of September. Exactly. <laughs> um. So the the new moon when we see when we see that that sliver in the sky that new moon at when we see it that night the next mm -hmm. day is the first day of the month. Okay, it's the first day of the month. Of the and month. That is okay. going to be uh, what we call September seventh. So okay. September seventh is actually the first day of the biblical seventh month. Okay. Okay. Got which it. Which is that, that that is very interesting. Wow. Uh, but but wow. yes. So um, Yahweh Shah's what, quote unquote birthday is the Feast of Trumpets, and it's a whole entire week long celebration. This is actually the same celebration where he turned water into wine. That's right. That's exactly it's at, right. It's at a marriage feast. That's it's exactly right. Feast. Wow. So you know his birthday party. You know he he had everybody. Okay, I'm sorry. Was about he was about to say turn up, turn up. Turned up. You was about to say turn up. But, okay. But 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 look, but look, as the days uh, there's seven days. It's a days, celebration, it really is. But there's seven days of these feasts, and there's there's you know 13 bullocks, then the next day there's 12 bullocks that are sacrificed. The next day there's 11 bullocks, uh, uh 10, 9, 8, 7 bullocks, 6 bullocks, uh, all the way until the seventh day. Um, you know, the seventh day, seven bullocks, uh, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? So when you add up these bullocks. These bulls, you know, um, when you add them up, they come, there's, it's 70 of them. Wow. Okay. Finish, finish your point because I have a really goofy question, but go ahead. There's, seven, there's 70 bulls that has been sacrificed during the course of this event. And this is the marriage feast, mind you. What's happening is he is uh, making a sacrifice for all the nations. If you go and look at the, 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 the Gentile nations series that we did. Uh, you will see that there's 70 nations. Correct. He invites them all to the marriage banquet. But these nations are abominable. They have done evil throughout their all their generations. Yes. What he's doing is cleansing them and purifying them along the way with these mm. bullets. And it's a bullet for every generation. Wow. The 14 lambs each day. Mm -hmm. That's the 12 tribes with Ephraim and Manasseh. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this is amazing. He's cleansing them. He's cleansing them this during is amazing. the feast, during the wedding feast. Wow. He's keeping us purified the whole time. Wow. And there's a set course. There's a set method as to how we are purif uh, purified, um, uh, you know, in the kingdom. And it's not only Yahweh Shah's, uh, you know, sacrifice on the on the Staros. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's that's only one aspect that 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 keeps that cleaned our slate that paid our ransom and brought us back but now what you know what i mean like we still there's still sins that we do that are you know ignorant out of ignorance there's you know there's still sins that we do that that uh, you know um uh, unknowingly or what have you and um even in this feast because like, like he hasn't really fully the marriage isn't consummated until after the event that's mm -hmm. when the, that's when the marriage is fully consummated okay so we're not like if you continue to read in scripture, you, you'll see that we haven't or we still haven't arrived because mm -hmm. you can get booted out while you're in the feast. See. <laughs> so we still haven't arrived and see. So this is the this is one valid and vital point. And this is an exceptional place to do our segue to uh, cut off for tomorrow, which is again here the Feast of Trumpets. 
for 2024. So we are going to pick up tomorrow with this actually playing out the rest of this. But I hope that you've enjoyed what we've listened to thus far. I know that I have. And some of you may not even know that L.A. Marzulli played the piano, but what a wonderful treat that we had in between the two portions of this show, right? Right. All right, folks. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out with us for about the last 51 minutes. And uh, do tune in tomorrow when we will close out and round out the Feast of Trumpets. It'll be part three of our program that we had in 2021. And of course, it is aptly fitting because tomorrow, October 5th, 2024, will be our Feast of Trumpets for this year. All right, everybody. You all take care and have a wonderful evening. Like a perspective.